What's up, Storm fans? Bryant Cook, and today we are playing Pioneer. This deck is so sweet, the Wish Lotus deck. It's what I've been championing the last few months here in this format. I know a lot of you are really, really excited about the organized play announcement where Pioneer will be a part of the Pro Tour. There's a feature spotlight on Pioneer. I've noticed a bunch of my Pioneer Lotus videos now gaining tons of views and interactions, comments, likes, etc. I love it. You love Lotus Combo, I love making the videos, so that's what we're doing today. And I'm happy that everyone's really excited about this deck. So I receive a lot of comments like, Brian, do you think that this build is better than the Emergent Ultimatum build? My stance will always remain, there are pros and cons to every list. And I truly do believe that. It's not that one list is always better than the other. You have to figure out what's best for you. So with the Emergent Ultimatum list, you play a bunch of cards that are higher impact, but are also clunky and dead in most scenarios. I'm talking about Omniscience, Behold the Beyond, a bunch of cards like that, that don't do anything until you're already winning. That's the downside of those decks. So you have a bunch of cards in your deck that cost six plus mana that are functionally dead until you've already done your thing. But with this list, everything is pretty live except for the Peer into the Abyss, which the other deck also plays. So... It's a lot lower to the ground there's a lot more play to it and you can leverage your ability at being good at the game to create more wins due to having lower cost cards in your deck like wish that are your action spells that can also increase your consistency to find lotus field so that's what i'm looking to do i want to be able to make more meaningful decisions and win the game so this deck list hasn't changed a whole lot if i'm being honest in my previous video i talked a little bit about leyline of sanctity and how i chose not to play it and then i got paired into a bunch of black decks and uh we went three and two unfortunately but i don't think it's correct to play towards those black decks being a big player in the metagame because i always build my decks to beat the pinnacle of the format so when we look at the top of the format, you have Is It Phoenix, you have Azorius Control, you have Winota, you have Lotus Field Combo, all these different decks. Well, why would you build your deck to beat the black decks running like Necromentia and stuff like that then? Like those decks are roughly 8 to 10% of the metagame, where Azorius Control on its own is 12%. So it doesn't make sense mathematically to hedge your deck for that. So instead, I'm looking to beat the top of the metagame, and that's what this deck list does, in my opinion. So Lotus Field combo in general is very, very good against blue decks, uh, just because the most common counter spell in the format is Mystical Dispute. And when you're a Lotus Field deck, you can easily pay three, which is really cool. So you're naturally good against those decks, but then we have our own copies of Mystical Dispute. We have Thought Distortion, which can't be countered, that discards or exiles all of your opponent's counter spells from their hand. We also have this niv Mizzet that can't be countered. On top of that, we have uncounterable answers like Beseju, who endures, and Atawara, Soaring City, to stop Planeswalkers and, you know, various other things. So our deck list is very good in those matchups, and that's the reason you'd want to play Lotus Field. If you're looking for an introduction to this deck, this is not that video. I'm not going to teach you everything there is to know about Lotus Field. I actually recorded um, a Challenger deck breakdown that really got into the nitty gritty of that. You can actually find the Challenger deck breakdown in the card above. So if you're just coming to this channel now to watch Lotus Field content, you should definitely check out that video. Uh, because today I'm not going to explain how the deck works. Uh, we're just going to hop on in and play, but that would definitely be a video to check out. And if you're here for the first time, this deck is based around getting this card Lotus Field into play and then copying it with Thespian Sage and doing wild things. I, I guess I'll say that, but that's what I've got. This is Rug or Teamer Lotus Field combo. As always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, whatever, put those in the comments section down below. But I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet today. I have a few videos I need to record today on this Saturday. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know what you think. And uh, I will see you in the first match. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for 
cyborg help? Become a stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. But maybe sweet perk, secret deck list, early access to videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out the epicstorm.com shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, Line, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for 7 tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us, just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match 1. I realized that there was actually something from the deck tech that I forgot to cover, and I am terribly sorry. So today we are playing 4 copies of Ketria Triome. A card that I receive a lot of questions about it in the comments sections because Catcher Your Triome is a $12 card in paper, 10 if you find some like light player, you know, MP ones or whatever, but it's 10 to $12. And people are always like, hey, is this a decent budget option? So it's a tough call because there's nothing like Catcher Your Triome. It is an island, a forest, and a mountain, which means that you can get it with Besage You when your opponent tries to blow up your stuff. It perfectly color fixes for us and it's just a terrific land in general. I've actually increased my number from two to four because I wanted to include more green sources for Grazer, and I'm playing those over the blue-red fast land Spire Bluff Canal. I get it, it's a $12 card or $10 card, whatever, uh, and people are budget conscious. That's fine, play whatever's best for you. There's like the Bomac Frontier or whatever, that's an option, but it's not great because you can't get it with Besaju. Sometimes the affordable options just they're not as good. You have to make a decision on what's best for you. I don't build my deck list with budget in mind. I just try to build the best deck list possible. So I just want to address that because it is something that comes up a lot. If you can afford catchers, get them. If you can't, don't. I mean, there's also the uh, the red green cycle land. So maybe if you wanted to, you could play like one of the red green cycle land sheltered thicket, I believe it's called, and then like three Bomac frontiers. I don't know, but for now let's hop on in and uh, play this first match. So this hand's great. Uh, we have the wishes or action spell. Gets a card from outside the game, so possibly this peer into the abyss. We have the lotus field. We have two lands, and we have Sylvan Scrying to go get the Thespian Stage, so this is a pretty easy keep for me. Okay, so we're going to start on the Ketria Trium, and then pass the turn. On the second turn, we'll cast Sylvan Scrying for the Thespian Stage. Opponent plays a Mountain, so they're on a Burn deck, uh, which they can be a little bit tougher of matchups. Uh, I won't pretend that they're easy. All right, let's uh, scrying here, go get that stage and pass the turn. Swiss spear, okay, they're uh, coming in hot. Play with fire. So we are going to take six damage this turn and go all the way down to 14 already. They put a card on the bottom, still four cards in hand for our opponent. Okay, we're at 14. Grazer was a very good draw here. Okay, so... I want to do this. All right, so let's play Grazer. I guess we'll just sacrifice these two and then play the stage. I don't think it really matters all that much, but uh, Grazer was such a good draw because it buys us a little bit of time here. We will block. Okay, they're just letting the damage through. Goblin Chain Whirler. Okay. Draw. We're at 12. 
So we have a decision to make this turn. There's a few plays I can make. So I think playing the Besaju here first is free. So I can copy my Thespian Stage, or Thespian Stage copy Lotus Field, floating two mana. And then from there I can cast Shimmer and set up for a win next turn. I could also, this is five mana. So cycling Vizier is always plus one when you have a Lotus Field. So that's six mana. I can play Wish into Anger of the Gods. And then our opponent only has three cards and I feel like I'm pretty unlikely to lose from there. Uh, especially when we have 12 life. Um, where I could in theory die next turn. Like let's say I block Chain Whirler and then our opponent's hand is triple burn spell, I'm dead. So I think you're actually supposed to um, wish here just so that you don't lose. You could like, I knew, I normally don't love these reactive plays because like I say a lot of the time, like play to win, don't play to lose. But right now, this is a pretty free line in my opinion. Well, let's cast Anger. And drawing the other stage was actually fairly good. Uh, and they have another Chain Roller, so we're going to 11. Den of the Bugbear. All right, so we're going to double copy this turn. And this just gives us a bunch of mana for the following turn. So we have 10 mana on board. We'll have 11 mana if we get to untap. Um, oddly enough, we need 12 mana to win with Pier because you do need two mana floating. They're going to activate Den and we'll take seven. So that puts us to four. A Vizier or a Hidden Strings off the top wins. Draw. Mechanical Sanctum. Okay, so... I think we're supposed to Shimmer here. And I'm going to tap this Besaju. Four of the pages was a terrific find, so we'll take that. And Pour makes one mana. So it, it does make a mana, but it's not quite... And there's Peer. So Peer actually just wins here. Um, but it wouldn't have been enough on its own because it cost two to Shimmer, and then we gained one off Peer, so you're actually negative one. That said, we got pretty lucky. We drew the Peer. And uh, we're just going to cast it now, going down to two life versus the red deck. But we just drew half our library, and it should be pretty easy to win from this spot. So we'll oh, untap. Sorry, I clicked on the wrong trigger. Okay, so now we draw. We have another Vizier over there. Uh, we're lagging a little bit, and the opponent conceded. Okay, so let's go to sideboarding. I am only playing one Anger of the Gods and it's to get with Wish. So we don't board in the Anger, even though we're facing an aggro deck. Instead, we do have these March of the Swirling Mist to slow our opponent down. Uh, this is a great card for answering Eidolon to the Great Rebel or multiple creatures, so that way you can win the game. So we are interested in our three copies of March. Well, what do we board out then? Uh, fair question. I think you can shave on a pier because you don't want three of the card that loses half your life against the aggro deck. You could probably get rid of one copy of Brawl, and then you need one more slot. Um, and that's the tough part, in my opinion. So I am a deck list that plays an extra land in it. I play 26 lands if you count all of our flip spells, like Valka Awakening and Valaged Recovery. So you could board out one of those. Um, but I think I'm actually just going to board out a Consistency card in Shimmer. Uh, this is a fast matchup where you can't always afford to have as much consistency as you'd like. So I'm going to uh, submit this 75, at least on the draw. Time for game number two. So here we've opened up Grazer on turn one with a green source, which means that we can accelerate our game plan. What this hand is lacking is a way to get Lotus, but I value having Grazer in hand so highly that I'm going to keep this against the red aggro deck. Also, having March isn't, you know, bad either. All right, so let's take a draw. Um, I think I'm going to keep the Ketria because that's a card I can cycle to help find Lotus Field. And pass the turn. Lightning Strike, so they're going to target our Grazer. So Grazer here not only accelerated us, it also saved us three damage. Okay, draw. Hmm. 
I'm going to play the stage and pass the turn. So I get to hold up March of the Swirling Mist here, but I also get to cycle Ketria Triome. Okay, the opponent's going to get in. Ouch. Any effects before damage? No effects. So we're going to take 1 to 17. Is this another Chain Whirler? Bone Crusher Giant. Sure thing. Okay, so I'm going to cycle the Ketria here. Cycle. Pour over the pages. Draw. Another Vizier. Okay, so I could play a Vizier here. Which would allow me to hard cast poor next turn, assuming that it lives. I think I like that. So I'm going to play the Vizier and pass. You could have, in theory, played the Balagad, um, but you don't have blue blue next turn for this anyway, so I don't know if I love that. The opponent's attacking. I think we'll just take the five. If I don't know. If they want to kill this thing, make them spend a spell on it. Eidolon, sure. Draw. All right, so we have found a Lotus Field. Okay, so we're going to go to 10 off this Eidolon trigger. We will go get our field. And we can play field here. Sacrifice these two and pass the turn. Okay, Torben, um, I want to respond to this. So what I'm going to do is... What's the best way of doing this here? Um, so I would go to 8 off the Eidolon, and then these would deal me 6, 9. I would go to 1. Oh, I'm sorry, that would be lethal. So I have to do it for at least 2. So if I untap Lotus Field, copy, I'd float one mana, and then I'd have to pitch the Vizier. But I could hit all three that way. Okay, let's do this. We're going to have to get a little bit lucky to win this game, but when is that not the case, right? Okay, so we're going to copy our Lotus Field with the Thespian Stage, and we'll have two floating mana. And march, target, target, target. Okay, and then we'll pitch this Vizier of the Tumbling Sands. Now we have to pay two. Click done, and all three of these creatures are going to phase out, and we will not die to the Torben. But now it's our time to shine, time to win this game. Let's start off with a Pourer Pages, which makes a single mana. That was not very good. Um, I'm not going to pretend it was. So what we can do now is play this Brawl and Balagad back the uh, Pourer Pages and hope for a better second copy of it. All right, so let's return the Pour, Blue, and try again. All right, so that's not what the doctor ordered. That was pretty bad. Um, we can get a cycle land here off the scrying and attempt to stay alive that way. Hmm. Okay, so we'll scrying here. Get the Ketria Triome. I guess I should probably play the load of the stage here. Because I want to be able to not have to hit in strings if I if I brick on the draw here. So we'll cycle the Triome. Adawara. Okay. So I am forced to pass the turn. But we can march for five next turn, which buys us a single turn here. We do take four off the Bone Crusher Giant, though, if I target it with the march due to the Torben. Okay, I'm going to respond to this stomp. Because they're trying to kill it with the Torben ability. So what we can do is untap the Lotus Field. Tap it again. And we will march. So 
I actually take the same amount of damage if I um, target the Bone Crusher Giant. So I'm I'm not going to target Bone Crusher. Ooh, I just realized if I wasn't going to target Bone Crusher, I could have left back Vizier. That's a mistake on my part. I've already uh, done the Vizier thing, so I can't undo. But that's a mistake, because I could have Vizier back to block with. That's just a mistake. Ah, uh, that's a bummer. Ooh, and I just messed up again. Not that it really matters, uh, but I if I I didn't need to pay four into the the march, but I, I forgot because I have the brawl in play. This would have cost three, so I could have in theory bounced the uh, the brawl or the bone crusher. So it's just a mistake on my part. Okay, so now the opponent's going to go to their attack step. I'm gonna go to four. There's no difference between being at four and being at eight, really. I guess if I drop here, there is a difference. All right, let's block. We do have two peers in our deck and wish that we're drawing towards. Land number three. Vortex. I don't play spells for free in this version, so this card doesn't really affect us other than the fact that uh, we can't gain life, which doesn't matter. We don't have gain life spells in our deck. And it deals us one on every upkeep. So we have to draw right now to win the game. All right, so we'll take one. We go to seven. And sure, don't care. All right, come on, deck, please. Vespian Stage does not do it. So we went 23 cards into our deck without ever finding a wish or appear into the abyss. Uh, sort of a bummer, but that's game number two. We cannot uh, win this game anymore. So we will go to game number three. So do we want to make any sideboarding changes? Like I could in theory board the Shimmer back in. I don't want to board up on Pier. That's not something I'm really interested in. Uh, so I could bring the Shimmer back in over a land. I don't know how I really feel about that. Um, like you could maybe board out Ketria 4. For the shimmer, that's a decision that could be made here. Uh, let's try that out. I'm up for trying things. This is still 25 lands because we have 20 lands plus the five flip cards. And we're on the play for game number three. Unfortunately, we cannot keep this. And we're going to five. Yikes. Just no lands. I, I guess we have a Valkyrie here, but you know what I mean. So this is actually a two-lander. Uh, we have Valakut and we have Balagad in the scrying. So this hand does get Lotus Field. It's just very, very slow. I don't think I'm supposed to go to four, though. We'll keep this. Get rid of the March and the extra Valakut Awakening. We're going to play Balagad first because if we draw an untap land, I can cast this Sylvan Scrying a turn sooner. I wouldn't expect to win this game. Like, we just opened up two unplayable hands in a row. And if you're thinking, well, you boarded out a land, we never even saw Shimmer in those two hands, so that didn't make an impact. Mountain in the Solsar Mage. Okay, draw. Another Balagad. Okay. So we're going to play the Balagad here and just pass the turn. I'm sorry, not the Balagad, the, uh, the Valkut Stoneforge. So, uh, there, depending on what our draw step is, there's an interesting line we can take here. So, Wish into Lotus Field does cost three mana. If we draw an untapped land, you can play the Wish, but we've already played our land for turn, so we can use uh, the Scrying to go get Thespian Stage, and then, then on the following turn, Wish for Lotus Field. It's a slow line, but I feel like it's what we have. Um, and here we have Grazer that can help buy a little bit of time. Okay, so let's go get the stage. Um, if I play Balagad here, 
It doesn't really make a difference. All right, so I'm going to play stage and pass. We need a lot to go right for us to win this game. Land number three from the opponent, still three cards in hand. Bone Crusher Giant, so we'll take one going to 12. Come on, Lotus Field. Ding! Hell yeah. Okay. So that was an amazing draw. We just got back into this game. Copy the Lotus Field. Sacrifice these two. And pass the turn. So next turn we have six mana. Hidden Strings is plus four. Bailgad would be 11. And we have a land drop. So the magic number for Wish and Appear is 12. Ooh, are we dead? Uh, I don't think so. I think we actually just won. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's go through this again. So this is 6. Hidden Strings is 10. Bailgad is 11. The magic number for Wish and Appear is 12. But we have a land drop. So I think we've actually got this. Okay, so let's Hidden Strings. Yes, yes, no. Okay, and now we use Belged Recovery to get back the hidden strings. Okay, now we'll add a little bit of red and untap. Yes, yes, no. Play the wish. Now we tap for three black, three blue. We still have a land drop, so we need to draw, you know, untap land plus untap effects. That's what we want here. So we have an untap land, and we have a bunch of untap effects, so this should be uh, pretty easy. No Vizier. That's what I was uh, searching for there, because a Vizier would allow us to make a better play here, but uh, we, we never found a Vizier. So we will untap the Lotus Fields. Yes, yes, no. Play Baral. We're at one life. Winning by the skin of our teeth. Now we can hit in strings again. Yes, yes, no. Okay, and I will cast Wish. Okay, hit in strings again. Yes, yes, no. Okay, so... The game plan here is to play Niv Mizzet. So tap this for oh, they're conceding. Okay, so that was match number one. We won game three on a mulligan to five against the red aggro deck. How crazy is that? Um, but so we would have tapped this Lotus Field, uh, played Niv Mizzet, and then cast pour over the pages, and then untapped our lands again. And eventually, what we want to do is cast this Valakut Awakening. So we could either pick this one back up out of our graveyard with the Balagad Recovery or drawn to the other one. But eventually what we do is we cast it and then we put a whole bunch of cards on the bottom of our library and then we draw a whole bunch of cards off the Valakut Awakening. So you never actually draw any more or any less with the Valakut, but you get a whole bunch of Niv-Mizzet triggers that in theory, well, I guess it's not in theory, it happens. You shoot your opponent for 20 damage. That's match number one over Mono Red Aggro. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in match number two. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Match number two, we're facing ZMF. We're on the draw, and I have no clue, and I mean no clue what they're playing. So here we've opened up Grazer into Lotus Seal, but we're missing land number two, which is pretty vital. So the question is, should you keep or mulligan this? Well, I think that you have to break down what this hand does. So let's say we get lucky, we draw land number two off the top. You then put Lotus Field into play on turn two. You can use Vizier to create a little bit of mana with Wish. Well, you're not really doing a whole lot, but something you could do is Wish for Dig Through Time to help find the rest of the combo. So is this worth keeping? I don't know. Uh, 
my gut tells me that you should mulligan because your average six is likely better than this. So I'm going to take a mulligan. And this hand's absolutely fine. We're going to try this out. Uh, we can get rid of a sanctum. And let's go. Turn one blood crypt. And they're tapping it and passing the turn. So we'll take a draw. Another grazer. Not ideal. Uh, so we'll play grazer here. Put the stage onto the battlefield and pass. Next turn we want to cast shimmer looking for lotus field. Okay. Croxa. Well, we do have this grazer to discard now. We don't really want the grazer, so that works. Grazer down. Grazer down. Okay. Draw. All right, so let's see if we can find a lotus field. Valcut Awakening, Besage You, Thespian Stage, and another Grazer. So none of these are that good, but I like the idea of taking the Valcut here because we can use our Thespian Stage to copy the Blood Crypt and then cast this eventually. I don't know if that's actually a play that will happen, but it's something you could do in theory. Another Croxa. Okay, so I'm actually just going to discard this Valcut Awakening. Um, I think it's just better. So we can cycle Vizier without ever having to spend a turn uh, copying a land, which I think they're similar enough. And here we got lucky. We drew the scrying, and we can put Lotus Field onto the uh, table. Okay, so those get sacrificed, and we pass the turn. Opponent's start was double Croxa, which is pretty good against the combo deck. Okay, so they finally run out of discard spells by the looks of it. And it looks like they're going to activate the blood token immediately. Looking for land number four, I imagine. Discards a Blood Chief's Thirst, which could destroy Grazer. They chose not to. Take a draw. Wish. So with this Wish, we actually have a win next turn. Uh, in theory, you could dig through time right now, but our opponent didn't have any discard this turn. So this just these three cards win the game on their own next turn, or we could like go for it now by casting Wish into Dig Through Time, which I think is a little bit greedy. So instead, I'm just going to copy and pass the turn. I'd rather just win the game, assuming that our opponent doesn't have another discard spell. Like if they had one, they likely would have played one right there. So. I think it's worth the risk. Chandra, you got it. Graveyard Trespasser, okay. And they killed our Chandra, or our Grazer. How dare they? Fatal Push. They have one card left, and now we should be able to just win this fairly easily. So we're going to cycle Vizier, which, like I said in match number one, when you cycle the Vizier, it makes plus one mana. Let's move our opponent's uh, Chandra card up there. So that way we can see everything. So plus one, draw. And now we cast this Hidden Strings. Target our two lands. So this is plus four. So now we have five mana plus uh, six mana here. Remember I said the magic number for Wish into Peer is 12. Well, this is 11, but we have another land drop. I could bail get into Hidden Strings now just to make sure that we uh, have the mana, and I feel like that's fairly free here. So I'm going to bail get into Hidden Strings. Tap this for red, and Hidden Strings. Okay. Now we can play the Wish. Tap this Lotus Field. Tap and peer into the abyss and this is one of the nice things about this list in my opinion is you just have so much so many ways to access peer into the abyss which is just your easiest way of winning the game in most matchups so that's one thing that i really enjoy so we essentially have seven copies of peer into the abyss in this wish uh list that we're playing and even the uh the emergent ultimatum lists they want to be casting peer into the abyss it's just they only have one but then they try to tutor it up with um, Mergent Ultimatum itself. Okay, so let's play the Brawl. Hidden Strings. 
Yes, yes, no. Tap, tap. Hidden strings. Yes, yes, no. Okay. And now we can do wish. Whoops, undo. Let's make some red mana and play Niv Mizzet. Hidden strings. We're going to auto yield to this ability and then save targets. Target our opponent. And then auto yield to that one as well. So now whenever we cast a spell, it just will automatically draw and deal damage. Okay. So now we have a whole bunch of mana and we're getting triggers off our Niv Mizzet. So now we want to cast Valakut Awakening. That's the next step. We don't have Valakut in hand, but we do have this one in the graveyard. So let's cast the Valakut Recovery. Pick up the Valakut Awakening. So that deals a damage. We have 21 cards in our hand right now. Our opponent's at 18 life. So we're going to cast this Valakut Awakening, which will deal them one. And now we have to put 17 cards on the bottom to win the game. Should be pretty simple. Click, click, click. That's what we're doing at the moment. Just selecting all of our cards. Okay, I don't know if I selected 17, but I, I certainly did a lot. Okay, so... And now all the triggers will resolve. Look at that. Okay, so we won game number one over the red-black mid-range deck. Pretty sweet. Good stuff. And now we go to game number two. So another feature of this list, and I mean that, it is truly a feature, is that we only play three Lotus Fields in our main deck. That seems like a bug, right? Like not a feature? Wrong. These black decks are Necromentia decks. So what they're looking to do in post-board games is play this three mana sorcery that will exile all copies of Lotus Fields from our library. That's pretty, that's pretty hurtful. But we have this wish that can then get the one out of our sideboard. Actually, in my previous video, I did this against the Red Black deck as well. So we are less weak to Necromentia, but you might be thinking, well, what if they just name Wish? That is entirely fair. They would require your opponent knowing our deck list, which is possible, but there's a really easy way of getting around that, and it's simply to board in a single copy of Niv Mizzet, and then we can board out a Grazer. So then you can, I mean, you could, in theory, board out these Grazers and then bring in something like Mystical Dispute to slow down your opponent. Uh, because I don't think Grazer is particularly good in this matchup, if I'm being honest. Uh, so you could board in cards instead of the Grazer, I guess, is my point. Um, there's not a whole lot to bring in. You could bring in March to slow down your opponents, uh, and I think that'd be fine. You could also bring in the Dig Through Time. I don't have any real... Um, strong things here but one thing that i do like about grazer is that it gets your lotus field into play faster before the necromentia and i think that's just a little bit better than mystical dispute so i'm going to try this configuration at least for game number two game number two on the draw so here we have this thespian stage and a lotus field these are two vital cards to winning this matchup uh i really don't like over mulliganing against the thoughtseize duress deck but <sighs> This hand, like, it, it's fine, but it's essentially a mulligan to five with double grazer already. So I think I'm going to keep this because, once again, we have to draw into land number two anyway. So I'm going to mulligan. And this seems okay. Uh, I'll keep this, and I'm just going to get rid of the grazer. Okay. And there's the thought seize. So if we had kept that seven, they'd probably discard our Sylvan Scrying right now, and then we'd have our combo. Uh, well, our, we, we'd have the combo, but we'd have to draw running lands in order for it to work. So Wish is good, because Wish allows us to uh, go get the Cyborg Lotus Field. All right, so we're passing the turn, Den of the Bugbear. And there is passing, wow. Okay. Um... I think I want to keep back this Ketria Triome. I guess I just showed our opponent a draw step that I didn't need to do. I should have played the uh, the Bark Channel Pathway. That's my mistake. Um, but I just showed them that I drew a blank. Bone Crusher. So their turn three is probably playing Bone Crusher. 
my goal right now is that right in, uh, on our next turn, so you can have your Bone Crusher. Um, oh, go blank. Okay. Um, so that changes things a little bit. I think I'm going to get rid of the... I guess I'll keep the Valakut Awakening. All right, we'll discard these two. Uh, but what I was going to say was next turn cycle the Ketria and then on turn four play Wish. With the go blank that changed things, so now we need to reevaluate. Draw. Alright, so I can't play Wish in a Lotus Field this turn because we have to have a land drop for that to be relevant. So what I'm going to do is on their end step, cast the Valkyrie Awakening, putting both the Botanical Sanctum and the Awakening on the bottom, drawing two fresh cards. Land number four. Opponent has three cards in hand. Bone Crusher Giant, sure. Okay, so let's now play the Valkyrie Awakening. Put the Sanctum on the bottom and we will draw two. We drew the combo, how about that? Okay, um, I think I wanna keep this Balgat in hand. I'm gonna play Lotus Field, which might seem a little bit weird because if our opponent has like a Damping Seer or, or an Alpine Moon, I get punished a little bit. But the reason to play it out is these decks are more likely to have Necromentia effects than they are the Damping Seer or Alpine Moon, at least in my experience. So now we're taking four, going to 14. Our opponent has four cards in hand. Thought Seize. So they can discard our Wish, but we have this Balgad Recovery to get it back. And there goes our Wish. Okay, their fifth land. So that means that next turn they can attack with Den of the Bugbear. So their clock is definitely increasing. Shimmer is a good draw here. So you might think, Shimmer, why would that be a good draw? Well, my game plan this turn is to copy Lotus Field. That leaves me with two mana, which means that I can Shimmer here to help advance my game. So I'd love to pick up this pour of the pages and pass the turn. So... I think the best thing that could happen this turn is that our opponent attacks us for eight and passes the turn. And by that, I mean activates Den of the Bugbear. That's what's going to happen. All right, so this appears to be seven damage, but then they get to make a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature that's also attacking. And we take eight damage down to six, and now it's our time to shine. Ooh, they have a land. Okay, it's tapped. Good deal. So pour the pages incoming. Brawl, wow, another amazing draw here. So why Brawl is good, and this is going to seem crazy, but it's good because it allows us to cast Pour for four mana. And you might be thinking, like, you, that doesn't change anything, Bryant. Well, the reason that it's good is this Belgad Recovery here. So what I can do, I'm gonna cycle the Vizier here so that way I, I get a little bit of information first. But uh, Belgad Recovery into Pour of the Pages is mana neutral, but you're plus on cards. That's why it's so good. So I'm going to cast this other pour first, but we have this Balagad Recovery as a backdoor. Okay, so we're fizzling a little bit at the moment. Um, I'm going to Sylvan Scrying and pull land out of our deck. I'm going to go get a Ketria Triome, so that way we can cycle it. And we're going to Balagad Recovery. Get back the wish actually i don't know why i was so uh i was so tunnel visioned on the poor thing that i forgot we had a wish in the uh the graveyard so what i can do now is just make a bunch of mana and wish into peer into the abyss and win the game tap the triumph for red why not cast a wish and let's peer straight into that bis dis bis all right so this is going to be a, a match win over the Rakdos mid-range deck. No ley line to Sanctity necessary. Okay. Another Hidden Strings over here. Yes. Yes. No. We have a Wish. Just making sure we have enough mana for everything here. I believe we do. Okay, so we're going to add six red mana and cast wish play niv 
And then Valkyrie Awakening. Always yield. Save targets. Okay, so they're at 15. We have to put 15 cards in the bottom. So we're just going to select everything. Should be pretty easy. And our opponent's going to concede and save us some clicks. All right, so we are now 2-0 with this Wish Lotus combo list. Playing your favorite combo deck in paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot everyone's favorite storm wind condition, a galvanic relay exile indicator, four treasure tokens for strike it rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has slime time live, eighth progenitor ooze tokens with the power and toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice, we've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels versus Goblins, Chatterstorm versus Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel tokens and 20 Goblin tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. Match three on the draw. I have no clue what our opponent's playing, but we've opened up a pretty reasonable hand. Let's try this out. Hollowed Fountain. Ah, uh, I do not love my spirits matchup. This is definitely a tough one. All right, so we're going to play Arcatria and pass. Another Mausoleum Wanderer. Okay. No land two is a good sign for us. Draw. Grazer. How do I want to do this? I think I want to just shimmer this turn. Well, if I play Grazer this turn, that means next turn I can actually pay for both Wanderers. All right, I'm supposed to play Grazer. They can't counter it with this. Uh, this is instant or sorcery on it. Okay, pass the turn. And they hit land two. That's unfortunate. Okay, so now these have gotten huge. Uh, I'm just going to take the six damage. But let's scrying. They could counter it by sacrificing a wanderer here, and they do. Okay. We'll play the Ketria and pass. Shacklegeist. And I'll block. Okay, draw. Let's shimmer. So we found Thespian Sage, but we still need Lotus. Let's Shimmer again. We found Scrying. The problem is that I'm probably going to be dead before I can do anything. That's not good for us. Our opponent kept a, a one lander on the play and then was rewarded, which is kind of unfortunate. We're at six, and they have six power on board. Let's attempt a Sylvan Scrying. They're holding open um, the creature they're about to cast, Spellcrawler, here, and that's going to be the game. Okay, so they got rewarded for their keep. Uh, it's unfortunate, but that's how magic goes sometimes. So here we definitely want three copies of Mystical Dispute. And the niv mizzets are also super good here, so let's board in those. And I think you can probably board out Peer in this matchup, which seems crazy, but the way that this matchup breaks down is that they have a bunch of counter spells, and this card is just super costly, where niv mizzet can also just turn around the game on its own. So I think we want the Niv. Um, I wonder if we should board out Baral, or at least one. And then we're at 61 at the moment. Something I've also experimented with in the past, and we have a minute to talk about this, so I'll do it, is boarding in the Lotus Field and then just boarding out all of your wishes. 
and then just having all your stuff in your main deck like this and then you could like have a random one of that you want to keep so it could be a peer it could be something else um but i think i want to keep the wishes in i'm just saying that's an option that you have so we're at 61 I'll shave one wish, I think. Let's try this out. Okay. This is a tough matchup. Uh, we really needed to get that game one, in my opinion. This is fine. Keep. All right. Turn one grazer. We have turn two scrying into turn three scrying. Hollowed fountain into mausoleum wanderer. Okay. I'm just going to make them counter this. Yep. Okay, play the bail again and pass. Two mana, mausoleum wanderer, wanderer. That's annoying. Okay, draw. Let's see if they counter this scrying as well, because they could sacrifice both to counter this. And if they do, we have wish into Lotus Field next turn. All right, so let's go get our field. Pass the turn. Okay. Creatures with flying you control get plus one, plus one. All right. Oh, it's just a, a different art on the eagle. I don't think I've ever seen this art before. All right, so we'll take six here. Draw. Let's shimmer, see if we can find Thespian Stage. Another field. Uh, so I could take the field here and then play it next turn uh, by sacrificing this Valakut Awakening. I think that just has to be the play. All right, pass. Our opponents had two pretty good hands here. Like, they hit the land in game one. I understand there was some risk there. But this game, they then uh, opened up on Triple Wanderer, which is pretty good. Wow. Um, guess we just block five damage. Now they have double mana leak on board. Yeah, there's nothing we can do here. We're just dead. Um, yeah. Congrats. All right, so we are now two and one. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm. But that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. Back at it for the fourth match. This time we're on the play, though. Okay, so we have Wish for Lotus Field. We have Grazer to Accelerate. This hand seems fine. I'm loving the Ketrias. Like, I've been pretty impressed by them so far. I haven't really missed the, uh, the Spire Buff Canals yet. Okay, so turn one grazer. Put the catcher on the table and pass. Hollowed fountain. So this is likely Azorius control. Not really the matchup that we wanted to keep a hand that accelerates in a grazer, but it's fine. Oh, never mind. It's spirits again. <laughs> this isn't even a popular deck. Okay. So let's go get our Lotus Field out of the sideboard. So maybe this round I'll be able to showcase what our deck can do when Spirits doesn't not draw us. Okay, so we have Lotus Field on the table. Mutavolt. So I think that tells us that our opponent's Azorius and not three colors. I could be wrong on that though. I'm trying to bring up the, uh, the Pioneer metagame to see so they want to draw a card here. Hmm. All right, pulling up the Pioneer metagame off Goldfish. So where spirits? Not on the front. Oh, never mind. It's down here. Two point nine percent of the meta. Um, pretty bad matchup for us. 
I think we block here. Draw. And I, what I think I'm going to do is use Atawara to bounce the Shackle Geist to stop them from drawing cards. Um, and to play around another Shackle Geist, I'm going to use Atawara here to bounce it. Okay. Just trying to slow them down a little bit. And another Curious Obsession, okay. Yikes. So, yeah. Not a whole lot I can do about this. Draw. Another Triome. Let's Shimmer. Looking for Thespian Stage. We found a Scrying. I guess we take that. We know that they have Shackle Geist and three other cards in hand. Is this a Spell Pierce? Why are they tanking so long? I've never seen Spell Pierce out of Spirits, but you never know. People like to play weird cards in their decks. In fact, I'm looking at the uh, the results on Goldfish. It looks like Bant Spirits is the stock. There's not a single Azoria Spirits in there. Oh, and they do in fact have a main deck spell pierce. How about that? So I get punished for playing around uh, a card that you don't see too often. Okay, so we'll play our catcher a trial and pass the turn. Staggering insight. What is this? Another uh, curiosity effect. Okay, so they're getting in for six and we go to ten. Draw, and there's a stage. Okay, so let's copy the uh, the Lotus Field here. Okay, and then we'll hit in strings to untap the two copies of Lotus Field. I would have to get incredibly lucky to win this turn, but it is possible. Yes, yes, no. And now we cast Pour the Pages. Floating one mana. So we could pay for like a mana leak type effect. And we drew garbage. Ah, uh, that's unfortunate. Let's cycle this uh Tetria Triome, I guess. Draw. Okay, so you're saying there's a chance. Uh we can cast this. Four, but I guess I'm not playing around Spell Pierce. If I want to play around Spell Pierce, I have to play out the Besaju. So, oh no, I've already played my land. Um, what are the odds they have another Spell Pierce? The problem is that I'm also facing down Theoretical Lethal next turn. Uh, so they could animate the Mutavolt. And with that, this becomes three power, so that's seven, nine. They would need one more power. So another Obsession or Staggering Insight or another Lord would win the game for the opponent. I think I just can't afford to play around it, so I'm going to peer. Or pour, I mean. And another bad pour of pages. Wow. Um, discard the Thespian Stage. I think we have to go get another Triome here. I could actually get an Ottawara. I think I'm going to get the last Triome though. I don't want them to know about it. And I, I do have this Besaju in hand already that can blow up an obsession or something like that. Selfless Spirit. Um, so that's just game anyway. Okay, so they got me. Um, yeah, I mean, Ottawara, let's see what our top card was. It's not going to let me. Okay. So once again, we'll bring in Niv Mizzet and Mystical Dispute. Take out a Brawl and the Peer into the Abyss. And then one more card. I think we're fine shaving on Wishes. I really do. Okay, game two on the play versus spirits. 
I don't think we're allowed to keep this. Mulligan. Okay, so this hand's fine. We're going to bottom a copy of Lotus Field and uh, see what happens. Okay, keep and bottom the field like I mentioned. We'll just start off on a Botanical Sanctum and pass the turn. Hallowed Fountain. And a Wanderer. Draw. Okay, so let's hope that they counter this Shimmer. And they do. Okay. Pass the turn. And another Wanderer. Draw. Just play the field and pass. Furious Obsession. So now this becomes a four spike on it, or I'm sorry, a spell pierce on its own. And they found the second land, draw. So I'm going to right now represent having Mystical Dispute up. Because if I copy main phase now, the the story that I want to tell later won't be accurate. And by that I mean if I don't copy, if I just main phase copy now, if I have a dispute in game three and then don't copy, it might send a red flag to our opponent. Okay, so our opponent's drawing three cards a turn now, and they're passing. So there's a chance that our opponent has a spell pierce in hand, so that way they have a, a grand total of five mana they can make us pay. Draw. That was a good one. All right, so let's cycle Vizier. Untap the Lotus Field. Draw. So I'm going to hit in strings. Our opponent can make, they, if they have spell pierce, they can make us pay all five. Uh, but I don't really see the value in that, if I'm being honest, so I wouldn't expect them to make that play. And now let's add a little bit more mana and pour the pages. So this makes one mana. Okay, we can discard this stage, we don't need it. And then we will cycle Vizier, which also makes a mana. So everything we're doing right now is just incrementing by plus one. Draw. Hello, Niv Mizzet. Uh, welcome to the party. I want to make a little bit more mana before I cast Niv, because if they do have a spell pierce, they can stop uh, Niv into poor, and I don't want that to happen. Okay, looking pretty good right now. So let's cast Niv Mizzet. Okay. And I think I want to play Brawl as well. And now we'll tap this for mana and cast Pour, floating some mana. We'll deal the one at Wanderer. We want to get the Wanderer off the table. That's the main goal here. What is this? So it's a mana leak effect. Ah, so this is the reason they're on this enchantment build. We'll target the Wanderer again. Okay, and then we're going to Dispute and then target Wanderer. So this uh, pour is going to be countered by the Mausoleum Wanderer. But then we're so far ahead right now that it just doesn't matter. We'll save targets pointing at them. Auto yield. So this counters their thing, and we get to loot off the Brawl, which is another draw trigger, by the way. I've never actually had this come up, but I'm dealing my opponent an extra damage right now, which is pretty sweet. Okay, now we'll hit in strings. Okay, yes. Oh, they're going to concede. The the wizard uh, pair of Brawl plus Niv is at way too strong, and that's game number two. I wonder if I should have the fry in the deck. Is that wild? It just like, if they're going to suit up creatures, I don't hate it, but maybe that's just like not what I want to be doing. Because we're already boarding out playable cards like Wish. But maybe it's better than like Razor 4. 
Let's try this out. Game three. So this hand is good. It's just, it's slow and we need our Sylvan Scrying to resolve. Okay. So I'm going to play the Bark Channel here. So this way I can counterspell a turn to threat with this Mystical Dispute and just slow them down a little bit. All right, so they have the Spectral Sailor. I was never going to counterspell this, if that's what you're thinking. But I do think I'll counterspell that. So now they have to fight over this dispute, which makes it so that my Sylvan Scrying resolves if they do fight. And a second Obsession, okay. So we'll take two going to 18. Draw. We drew the Lotus Field. Okay. Um, let's scrying and get Ottawara. Could also just get a Besaju here. That might be better. Because I can just blow up the Obsession. When it still has four cards in hand. We go to 16, they get the draw card up to five. Selfless Spirit. Another Lotus Field is not what the Doctor ordered. Um, I'm going to destroy this Curious Obsession. I feel like what we want to draw into is exactly niv it. We have two turns to draw into Niv realistically. Deafening Silence, it's a little bit annoying. They have three cards in hand. Draw. Yeah, the Deafening Silence might just be the end of us. Pass the turn. So we have Scrying for um, Ottawara, where we can bail get back the Besaju. Draw. Hmm. I don't know if we even seen a shot here. Let's get the Besaju, I guess. Well, attempt to get back Besaju. I will pay three. Okay. Um, we have no action spells, which is another obvious uh, weakness here. I think I just have to play the stage. I was thinking about playing Ketria, but we might have to cycle that, assuming that we even get down tap. Because our opponent has five damage right here. They just need one more. So any of their enchantments kill us, a lord kills us. They have a lot. That That does it too. So that's lethal. So we have lost back-to-back -back matches to Spirits. Um, two very different builds. That said, Spirits in general, not a very good matchup for either version of Lotus. This isn't a wish Lotus is weak to Spirits. This is just like the Lotus archetype in general is pretty weak to uh, the Spirits deck. So kind of a bummer that we face 2% of the metagame twice, but it is what it is. Chin up and let's try to win match number five. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. The final match, we're on the draw. I'm going to keep this. Yes, it's a five lander, but we have half the combo. We have Shimmer to find Lotus Field. I think it's going to be fine. We have two utility lands over here. I, I mean, I just think it's a pretty reasonable keep. All right. Hidden Strings is eh, but we'll make it work. Obviously, Hidden Strings is a card that we want, but it's just not a card we need at this stage in the game. Black Black for Priest. So they're on the... Jun Sacrifice deck. Okay. Um, I think we should just Shimmer here. No need to play out Brawl into their Priest. Okay, Peer into the Abyss, Baligad. 
I think we just take the pier because none of these cards really help us get towards um, Lotus Field. Like, I could take Bail Again Recovery to get back Shimmer, or I could get Vizier to cycle. But assuming that I just find Lotus Field, we need a payoff. And I think I should just take the pier for that situation. Okay. Catacomb Sifter, you got it. As far as I know, these decks have cut Citadel. I'm checking that right now. I don't even see Gen Sacrifice on here. That's how long ago it's been since I faced this deck. Gen Sacrifice, 1% of the metagame. Uh, zero copies of Citadel in the first list. Zero in the second. That Citadel was always the card I was afraid of, so that's good to see. And we drew a Balgat anyway. So I think what I'm going to do is pick up the Shimmer and then pass the turn. Okay. Three mana. Another Catacomb Sifter. So they can get in for four here. So we'll go to 15. Plenty of time. Draw. Ding. Okay, so let's Shimmer. Trying to find another Hidden Strings or Vizier. No dice. We'll just take the Valkyrie Awakening. Play the Lotus Field. Pass the turn. So it's worth noting, I don't believe we can actually win next turn unless we get pretty lucky. Oh, they might be on a list with uh, Citadel in it if this is their play. We might be facing an older list. Okay, we're at 13. So two black, Blooming Marsh, and then the Pathway, plus this creature. And then that's six mana for Citadel. There it is. Okay, so we're facing an older list. We have to hope to get lucky and that our opponent fizzles, but I don't think that's going to happen. They still have a land drop too. They missed off the company, wow. Okay, with the Woe Strider, I'm likely dead here. Okay. Like, the odds that they fizzle are just insanely low. Okay. They get two Scries on every sacrifice. Horvold. Okay. Llanowar Elves. These are just free spells for the opponent because of the Prosperous Stain Keeper. Plus, they're creatures that they can sacrifice later to get quality Scries out of. Yeah, this is definitely not a stock list. This is like something that was popular a year ago. Um, but the more recent lists don't play a lot of these cards. They're like Meat Hook Massacre decks. Are they passing? Or did they just accidentally click through? Okay. I I don't think I should be able to untap here. Opponent's back up to eight life. Oh, they just need to get up to ten for the Citadel too. So they need to deal me one and then plus Citadel. And there's the Mayhem Devil. I'm dead. Yep, they got me. Okay, so they sacrifice the Corvold. Getting their scries in here. And more. They're at six life, so they also have some life to work with. Okay. Prosperous Innkeeper. Yep. Goose. Okay, so they kept a card on top. All right, they finally have it. I'm just going to save them a few clicks here and concede. 
Okay, so we're going to have to be a little bit more aggressive uh, knowing that they're on this list. The other list doesn't combo kill you like this. It's sort of just like it's a value deck. So we could have changed our play patterns to be more aggressive had we known that they were on an older list, but it is what it is. Let's just keep our head up and try to win the post war games. Game two. Sure, this seems fine. All right, Botanical Sanctum, Grazer into Ketria. Pass the turn. Overgrown Tomb. And the Gilded Goose draw. I'm going to Shimmer here instead of playing uh, Scrying. The reason I want to Shimmer is I could find either half of the combo, and I didn't, but I could have uh, found either half and then... It would have given me more information on which half I should get with Sylvan, and that it just didn't happen, unfortunately. Blood Crypt. The opponent has th three available mana here. Okay, so they're casting something for three. Catacomb Sifter. Draw. All right, I'm going to play the Brawl, and we're going to... I'm gonna shimmer again. No dice, wow. Okay, a little bit unlucky on those shimmers. We're just gonna pass the turn. Three mana, four mana, collected company. You got it. Priest plus Mayhem Devil. Draw. Okay, so let's play Lotus Field. It's gonna to be tough for me to win this turn just because I can only play one land a turn. Ooh, I forgot about uh, Mayhem Devil triggering on my own things. And they're going to target us. So one thing we could, and I mean, this is mostly just theory, but it is possible to win this turn off of a single Lotus, but we could also graze her into another Lotus field and then try winning that way. Wish. Uh, so I have Backdoor Anger of the Gods right now. Let's pour. Okay. Um, let's get rid of the scrying. So if I wanted to... We have five mana. Hidden Strings is plus two. So it's seven mana. Uh, Wish would be five floating, which doesn't really do anything. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Thespian Stage, and then I'm just going to bounce the Priest. So this way they can't kill my Brawl next turn with the Mayhem Double triggers plus the Priest, and it keeps them off of Citadel. And I should be able to uh, Hidden Strings with Wish next turn to Peer. No blocks. 15. Another Goose. So they can sacrifice this food with the Gilded Goose to get a trigger off the Mayhem Devil. Uh, we just have to keep that in mind. All right. So let's play the stage. Add some blue. Copy. And actually, do I don't know if I have enough here. Uh, I've already played my land, so I think I'm actually one mana short of winning. So we might be audibling right now to wish into uh, Dig Through Time, because I need to do something this turn. So these two lands cast Wish. These two would cast Pure, but I'd have zero mana floating, and I've already played a land. So... Yeah, I think we're just on the dig through time plan. I mean, I could also anger the gods, but that leaves me with one land in hand versus their four card hand. So I'm going to go big here and try to just win. Okay, come on, dig. Um, Hidden strings into pure does it. Okay, cast Hidden Strings. 
Yes, yes, no. We'll do blue, black. Here, I'm going to use up this red mana. Okay. Cycle Vizier. And they're just going to concede. All right, so we are going to game number three now. I'm just going to resubmit. Our deck is fine. Time for game three. We've opened up double Thespian Stage Sylvan Scrying, but no green source. We do have this Valakut Awakening, and two Pierce is essentially a mulligan of five, so we should just go to six instead. All right, so we have Lotus Field. We have two lands, even though they're a little bit slow. Uh, I think we try this, and we just bottom the Hidden Strings. So this is still a turn two Lotus Field for what it's worth. Because we lead off on the Ketria Triome, we play Valkut Awakening as our land, and then we can play the... Well, okay, that changed it. Um, okay, so let's just play Turn 1 Grazer. We'll put the Ketria Triome onto the table. This allows us to go turn 2 Shimmer into Lotus Field. Opponent has 3 mana. Prosperous and Keeper, okay. And a Gilded Goose, so they could have turn 3 Citadel here. Nothing I can do to stop it. Draw. Let's Shimmer. Another copy of Lotus Field doesn't really help me at all. So I think I'm actually going to take the Hidden Strings here. And pass. Okay, so they played their land. So they have three mana, four mana. They have six mana. Yikes, they have Citadel. That's not good. Turn three Citadel on the play. They're passing. Okay. Come on, Besiege you. Um, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. So I could play Balagad Recovery as a land. Brawl, untap, go up to four mana, poor. And then I'd have Valakut Awake. I guess this gives me a potential to find Besaju. So we'll play Brawl. Hidden Strings. Yes, yes. And I think I'd rather have it in the graveyard. Let's cast Pour. That wasn't that good. Um, there's nothing I can get with Wish that helps here. I am likely just dead, unless I Velka into Besaju. So I'm going to put all three on the bottom and just try to increase my odds. There's two in the deck. Three draws. So this doesn't help because I can't cast both. I mean, if for some reason our opponent fizzles, I can get Besaju here, but it's wishful thinking. I have to pass, and now we're just dead. I mean, my draw wasn't bad either. It's just they had a turn three Citadel on the play. There's no chance that we should be allowed to untap here. Oh yeah, we're definitely dead. Okay. I'm gonna save myself some time here because they also have Citadel plus just all these triggers. So I'm gonna pick it up. Uh, so this league was a little bit of a bummer. Uh, I'm not gonna pretend that it was all roses or anything like that. 2-3 is obviously not ideal. Um, but when we look at our matchups, we had two nightmare matchups with the uh, the spirit deck, which according to Goldfish is two and a half percent. And then we face the deck that is one percent of the metagame that is on an older build. So it's not even like the stock build that's one percent. It is one percent of like a super old build. So um, I don't feel bad about losing. Like, honestly, I don't feel like this is that bad of a matchup, if I'm being honest. But they sort of had like top tier draws. Um it is what it is, right? Like, losses happen. It's nothing to be upset about. So, our first two matches were a little more indicative of actual Pioneer metagame. And then, you know, the rest is what it is. So, 
would I change anything? No, I would run the same 75 back in another league if I was to record one. Is it a bummer I lost? Sure. But also, I'm not trying to make fun of anyone that cares about them, but leagues are literally meaningless. There's no value in leagues other than playing for fun. I would play this 75 in a Star City Open or a Showcase or a Challenge. In fact, there's a challenge later on tonight at 6. Who knows? Maybe I'll play it. Probably not because there's baseball on. But it's something I could do, and I really do believe in this deck list. I, I really do mean that. I would play this over the Emergent Ultimatum build, personally. Uh, I really enjoyed the Catcher of Triumphs today. They were much better um, than the Blue Red Fast Land. So I'm all for for Triumph now. Uh, I don't plan on going back on that. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. Uh, take care, keep storming, and have a great day. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.